It is not often that I turn to horror and expect to be charmed, but every once in a while something comes along and experiments with the genre and creates something really unique. It's rare that teams of people do it, less so when it's done entirely by almost one person. Alyssa, created by Casper Crows, is a tiny indie that packs a punch, perhaps not so much in its story, but very much in its aesthetics and presentation. Spoilers for Alyssa ahead. Okay, I'm just gonna come right out and say it. This is another title fit for Resident Evil fans. You'll feel it the second you take control of Alyssa on this misty train platform. I felt like I knew how to play Alyssa immediately. Fixed camera angles and tank controls are so ingrained in my DNA that even if I'm temporarily thrown off, I'm back to basics in short time. The retro graphical style is welcome, even if it's outdated. Perhaps it's the fantastical world you'll be navigating that allows that trait to shine. Since the game is a period piece, going back in time in terms of pixels almost contributes to the time capsule Alyssa fits in. We're not given too much to work with in terms of plot, but the setup is easy to follow. A spy has stolen military plans, and it's up to Alyssa and her partner to track him down. If you follow my channel, you know I write spy books, so I was in from the start. The inciting incident sees Alyssa attacked by strange creatures and swallowed up into the ground. The espionage plotline is dropped pretty quickly, and the narrative does an abrupt genre switch. When Alyssa awakes, she enters an upside-down world, and the residents of this peculiar Victorian mansion are as chilling as they are adorable. Look how cute all these damn creatures are. If they weren't trying to kill you, you might want to pet one. Once she gets exploring, Alyssa is attacked by a nightmare-inducing doll. I'm gonna get one of my gripes out of the way right now because it's really one of the only ones I had. The combat controls for Alyssa can be a little bit frustrating at times. At first I found them clunky, then overcomplicated. Mostly it has to do with aiming. With some time, I felt my skills sharpen and I was much more efficient in the third act, but they never really felt right. That's not to say that any of the other controls are difficult, because they're not. All environmental interactions and movement feel finished. It's the combat that doesn't seem optimized. I should also be clear that I played a seemingly very patched version of this game, the developer's cut. I've read that the early release featured some bugs and soft locks, but I can't verify that by experience. The game I played this week featured no bugs I encountered except one, and it was a pain. My revolver wouldn't fire after this boss fight. I could not figure out why. Eventually, I reset my game and that fixed the issue. I like that revolver too. Anyway, once I'd finally gotten somewhat comfortable with controls, I stepped out into the mansion proper. Feel familiar? It should. Alyssa wears its inspirations on its sleeve. If you grew up with old school survival horror titles, you'll know what I mean. Moving, aiming, and exploring were a natural fit because I'd been here before, except I hadn't. Soon the production design reveals the unfamiliar. Who is this dude? What's his deal? So many moments in this game had me surprised and grinning. Several times all I could think was, what is going on? And I mean that as the highest compliment. There's giant heads trying to chomp you. Then this monkey tries to clap you with cymbals. Why are these ballet dancers so big? At one point, I got smacked with a planet. I'm here for it. Whereas a game like Resident Evil tries to root its horror in the biological, Alyssa conjures horror from the odd and unnerving. What's going on with this guy? I don't know. I love it. Alyssa feels like someone hired Guillermo del Toro to take Resident Evil and Alice in Wonderland, mash them up, and then turn them into a video game in 1996. Alyssa is ambiguous, and for something that feels like a fairy tale, I was okay with it. It piqued my curiosity enough to keep my attention, and that's all I really ask. A great friend of mine always says, the worst sin art can commit is to be boring. Alyssa is far from boring. The best hallmarks of the survival horror genre are here. Item management, backtracking, ammunition conservation, puzzles, choice engagement, but with a twist. You'll discover items in the environment, but the real innovation comes with deciding whether or not you'd like to reap the rewards of killing an enemy. Downed enemies drop these little gears and cogs called tooth wheels, and those can be exchanged for items, weapons, ammunition, and costumes. By a puppet. I know, just go with it. The system is an added element of character building that's somewhere in between the Resident Evil 4 system and the original Resident Evil titles. You're encouraged to upgrade to a degree, but you don't need to engage enemies should you feel unprepared. The environments are intriguing too. You'll navigate the subterranean levels of the home, as well as the gardens and the chapel above. That reminded me a bit of Castlevania, another franchise I'm a big fan of. My only other frustration with Alyssa is that the mystery never really adds too much on the surface level. Its ambiguity might be fun during the course of the story, but doesn't particularly wrap up into a neat bow. Don't get me wrong, I don't necessarily need my stories to do that. Audiences are smart and shouldn't necessarily be spoon-fed. 
Having said that, I would have liked a little more coherence as I neared the end of my first playthrough. I'm sure lore enthusiasts can pick this puzzle apart piece by piece and get to the root of the story, but I didn't grasp as much as I would have liked on my first playthrough. I went and looked up some of the alternate endings because I was really curious what they might look like and I knew there had to be some. I was surprised to find that there was not only multiple, even more confusing endings, but also so much more the game has to offer. I'll stay away from all the different wardrobes, weapons, and modifications that you can discover within this game so you can explore it for yourself. But just know that there is seemingly a lot of replayability in this title if that's your thing. Those within the survival horror community might be surprised to also find some voiceover work from some notable contributors. Some of the voice acting is a little odd, but it really only adds to the otherworldly and nostalgic feeling Alyssa conjures. So that's Alyssa, a strange, fantastical, whimsical title that feels really rooted in its predecessor's designs, while also offering a period style that feels really fresh. If you're looking for that old school feel but want a new coat of paint, give Alyssa a try. It's a small commitment with big fun. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up or comment. Share it with your friends or survival horror fans. I'll be back with more soon. Be nice to each other in the comments. Thanks for watching.